everybody, Connie here from The Painted Photographer. I'm back. Hopefully I can get some videos done again. And life kind of slows down a little bit after the holidays. So I have a thrift haul for you. I'm gonna start out with this one. This was really dirty, grungy. Um, I did clean it all up before I showed you because it was definitely like left in a barn maybe. But it's a wood base. It has a like a felt plasticky bottom, which was it's foamy. So that's kind of cool. And then it's got, um, this is rusted metal because obviously somebody had it out in the garage. And then a wood base. So I did like the shape of this. I liked it having the wood base. I'm going to paint the base and uh, um, I don't know if I'm gonna list this or keep it for myself. Next thing I have is just a small little silver trivet. It had some cute little flowers on, um, but I did just really like it. And spring's coming. Here is just a tray and it's really deep. Like it's deep. A good, when I was washing this, cause this was dirty too, I washed all my items. They were in the house, so I thought why not? But when I washed this and it was sitting in the sink, I thought, hey, this could be a cool bird bath outside. Um, granted, my daughter's seen it and she's already claimed this, so it will not be listed. This, it's kind of copper. It's got this funky divots around the outside here. And then this base is a little beat up. So we're gonna paint this base and we're gonna paint it black, and then we're gonna do a copper patina on that base and see what kind of look that gets us. Then we'll probably have to do some of the copper around the outside, but we're gonna give this a little bit of a makeover. I'll do that right here. And of course, she already claimed this as well. We think this is an ice bucket. I'm not sure if it is or not. It has a handle on it. It has the copper lid. I think this is real copper, but I do not believe this is copper. So the lid that fits on there, it has a plastic black base and her kitchen is copper. So she wants that item as well. So there she is with her copper serving tray. And uh, I've done a few reels on this guy. So this is a plaster Santa head. Christmas was 50% off. So this was $13.98. And uh, I don't know that I'd have bought him for $14, but I did buy him at 50% off. He's got the wire hanger on the back. Do I paint him or do I leave him as is? I probably won't do anything this year with him. So please, Drop me a comment below if I should paint him or if I should leave him as is. Is he creepy? Do I need to paint him so he's not so creepy? Let me know. We got a little mouse salt shaker. There were two of them, but the second one, I think his foot was busted off. Or her. I think this is the he. The her. The foot was busted off, so I left it there. Then I have this, it's springtime. We're getting ready for spring, mice, birds. So this little Robin, it is, it says Robin by Andrea on the bottom, 6350. It is a really nice little figurine of a little Robin with a flower there. Um, it does not have a hole in the bottom, so these candlesticks do have post so you won't be able to put him on there. These three candlesticks were in a box, never opened. And they were, I think, $2.98 or something like that. And my daughter, who is the copper fan, um, she's looking for some candlesticks. So I picked these up and I'm gonna paint them copper for her. Here's a little resin bird. This one is ceramic, but this one is a resiny type bird. I thought he was really cute. He does have some little red berries here, so he could be Christmassy maybe, 
but his little beak was chipped. Like, not chipped enough to even feel it. You can't even tell that it was chipped, but you can see he's got a little white spot on his beak. So I'm just going to put some black paint on there and uh, he will be good as new. I think I am keeping him. I do like birds and I do really like this one. Here's another Christmas item. I've really stopped buying the Christmas items, but he did, he was interesting to me. And I thought I could put a base on the top and make him more of a table but I didn't realize that this wasn't flat. So I'm gonna have to, this is like a resin type material. I'm gonna have to see if my sander will sand that down flat so that I could put a base on there because I think you'd make a really cute little table. So we have that. I have an ornate mirror. So this mirror has a, a couple little cherubs on the top here and it's all sealed in the back with a hanger. It's very, very heavy. It's a heavy mirror. We're gonna paint this up and give it a facelift. And then last, I had got this little stool from my sister and she said, you want this? I'm gonna throw it out. It's a little on the wiggly side. So hopefully Wilson can take a look at this and fix it up and make it nice and sturdy and then we'll paint it. If we can't make it sturdy and it's not going to be a little, I'm not sure if it's a table or a bench. I would use it as a plant stand or something like that. Um, if we can't, then I got some really nice spindles and I got a nice oval board. So if it can't be used as a little table or sitting stool, then we'll use these spindles, but we're gonna try and fix it up and make it nice and sturdy. That's my haul. I'm gonna fix up some of these items and I'm gonna take you along on that process. I hope you'll watch till the end and see how they all turn out. Here's a little birdie I thrifted. The beak of his, end of his beak there was chipped. So I just took some paint and I put it over top and he's all fixed and ready to go. I just need a little big top on his little beak. Now for this tray, didn't really care for the center. It was a little um, scratched, so I took black paint, put it on the inside, let it dry, and now I'm taking the DIY Pennies from Heaven, which is a copper patina, and painting the entire inside to give it some nice shine. Painting it black was a good base versus the color that it was. Now, so that it all matches, I'm going over the entire tray with the pennies from heaven and also on the edges. This tray is for my daughter and she's going to love it. To tarnish it up, I added the DIY dark wax after the copper patina was already dried. And I added the dark wax and buffed it back off with the dry rag, leaving it looking very tarnished. Look at the difference on that. Um, to add to the copper patina, I used some DIY shipwreck wax, which is an aqua-y wax, and gave it a little bit of charm that way. For these candlesticks my daughter wanted, she wanted them copper as well. So I went ahead and I painted them all in weathered wood to give them a nice base and then went over top of them with the pennies from heaven. And you can watch my process here.
they re look really good with that pennies from heaven but my favorite is when i put the dark wax on them and give them that tarnished look Now here's a technique that I found. I don't remember where I picked up this little technique from, but I really like it and I'm painting a lot of things with it. So I have three projects that I'm going to do this um, paint finish on. The first coat gets some salt wash mixed into it. I sell salt wash on my website at thepaintedphotographer.com if you need some. I started to do the mirror without covering it up and then it I thought I'd just have too much of a mess. So I went ahead and covered it up with some paper and I'm painting with that salt wash in gypsy green and doing a, a pouncing technique, getting as much texture as I can on those items. If you've used salt wash before, I'm sure you've done that technique, but here's where it becomes different. This is completely dry. I take the dry salt wash and I sprinkle it over top of the dried DIY paint. Now you're gonna take your mister bottle and you're gonna wet that dried salt wash down. So make sure you get it nice and wet and it doesn't matter if it's too wet, it'll work the same. Then I took the gypsy green and I painted over top of this candlestick holder just to cover up some of that wood. So there's a little bit of texture on there. And then I just went ahead and added some smooth areas and also did that dried salt wash finish on the base of this candle holder as well. Put it on and take a mister bottle and get it wet and then let it dry. After the paint and the salt wash has dried, now I'm going to go over top of everything with the crinoline. Some of the salt wash is um, still movable. Most of it stays where it is, but some of it still moves around and that's okay. You get a little bit more texture in your top coat of your paint. So you want two contrasting colors when you do this technique so that you can see the results a lot easier. So just paint the entire surface with the crinoline and cover everything up. After it dries, once again, you're going to take a scraper and scrape that paint and wherever that dry salt wash was, it's going to flake off, giving you this chippy, unique, amazing finish. Doesn't look like too much of a contrast until you take a baby wipe and wipe off that powdery finish that was on top of that gypsy green. Isn't that amazing? And some of it, the DIY paint, you can distress back to the wood and give it also another finish of old chippiness. The ornateness to this frame was a little bit more difficult, so I took a paint scraper and I used that instead and just kept scraping. This one took a little bit longer to get some of those areas free of that salt wash, but then when I took the baby wipe and wiped it back, it was amazing. Then I went in using DIY clear wax and I waxed both of the projects with the DIY clear wax. I've used a lot of waxes in my time and DIY certainly has the best wax ever. They are available on my website at thepaintedphotographer.com.
And again, I do like my DIY dark wax. So since I had put the clear wax on first, it gave it a little barrier so that I could remove it and manipulate it a little bit better than just putting on the dark wax. I don't ever just put dark wax on over paint. I put some type of a finish on first so that I can take most of it off and leave the rest of it to make it more of an aged finish. These are beautiful. It's taken me a while to get my YouTube videos posted. I listed some of these items on my website. Some of them are located in the store that I sell at locally. And if you want to go ahead and take a look, it's thepaintedphotographer.com. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this stool in the crinoline and I'm gonna do the same finish as I just did, but I'm gonna do it opposite. So the crinoline's gonna be on the bottom. So I go ahead and I mix that salt wash in with the crinoline. If you aren't familiar with salt wash, you want to mix it up with the DIY paint, making it consist of like a brownie batter. And the thickness is going to help you to have some of those peaks and that, that texture on that first layer, which is what you want. Nice, thick brownie batter. Now I just went ahead and I turned the stool over and I painted the bottom side of the chair, giving it a lot of nice texture, not really caring that I didn't have it covered totally. You don't need to cover every little speck of it. For the top of it, I wanted a nice textury finish and you're gonna see by the end of this video, that's not what happened, but I'll show you the process. I had some weathered wood that was almost gone and so I mixed some water with it and I got every little bit that I could out of the bottom of that jar and put it into my salt wash bucket and now I'm going to add some salt wash to that to thicken it back up again and then use it as another layer of texture on this old stool. Looks like a spotted cow now. I took that dry salt wash and put it onto the stool, laying it all different ways and getting that moist and letting it dry. I love the color Salty Kiss. It's a nice, good spring color. So I painted the entire stool in the Salty Kiss.
taking the paint scraper after everything was dry and chipping off some of those areas where the salt wash was brings out those bottom layers of color, that weathered wood and that crinoline. And at this stool that was old, but never painted, looks like it was painted a number of times. So here I am working on the top. It did have a lot of texture to it and a lot of that salt wash stuck up on the top. So I did like that finish, but I didn't like that finish. So I took the entire texture and got off as much as I possibly could. So I really didn't like the top of it, so I took my DeWalt sander and sanded everything down. Now I'm painting a layer of the Salty Kiss solid layer back over the top, and it doesn't have that textury finish. It's now got more of a smooth finish. I thought I was done with that top. I thought I really liked it. I went in with the clear wax and I started to clear wax the top of it. And I'm like, oh, I, I still don't like it. I still need to add something to it. So I only waxed half of the top. And then I waxed the entire bottom part of it. And I sanded that wax from the top back off again for the next process. Using dark wax on this stool gave it some nice age. I really, this stool is turning out really, really cute. So here's the plan that I had for the stool. I do, this is my go-to paint inlay is the rose chintz, but I decided I had to get outside my box and use this paint inlay instead. It has some of that old 57 color and that coral. I just really, really like those colors together. And especially with the salty kiss, I think it'd be a nice summer springtime look. So using the paint inlays, you have to trim off the outside edges so that your pattern lines up. Now I took my stool and I found out where I wanted to place the birds and I went over top of the top of the stool one more time in Salty Kiss. So I got a nice wet layer of paint. When you're using the paint inlay, you wanna make sure that it's wet. And I put a nice generous coat over top of the entire top of the stool and it gave it a little bit of mist with my water bottle. And another trip that I heard is if you take the paint inlay and give that a little bit of a mist, it helps as well. So now I took the paint inlay and I'm laying it on top of the wet paint. You can see that it's very wet and it adheres. Now you're gonna line up that pattern. So I put that bird kind of off to the side versus in the middle of the stool and sealed the two pieces on top. 
Now you're gonna give it a little bit of a mist and a brayer. My brayer tool comes in really handy when I'm using these paint inlays. Those are available on my website. It gives you a really, really flat finish and it really makes that paint inlay stick into that wet paint. So if you're not using a brayer when you use a paint inlay, um, pick it up and try it. It really makes a big difference as what I found. So make sure you get that paint inlay all into the paint. After it dries, you're going to mist it again, getting it all wet, and you're gonna make sure that all of that paper backing is wet. And wait about 30 seconds because you gotta wait and let it, um, I don't know, be able to come pull off a little bit easier. And then look at that top of that bench. Isn't it sweet? I'm so glad I changed my mind and added this paint inlay. With the paint inlay, they are paint. So if you put a water-based solution over the top, you're going to smear those colors. So I do this very carefully. I take my brush and I barely touch it. And I only go over it one time. And I'm gonna show you the whole process because you can do this. Just my brush barely touches the top of that stool and I don't go back and forth. After that layer dries, then I can go back in with another coat of Big Top, making sure I get all of the areas and see I'm going back and forth and back and forth. Now you can do that, but when you have a paint inlay, don't do that without sealing it first. Using dark wax on the top of that stool where the big top is all dried. Make sure you have a layer of big top on there and it's all completely dried. I take the dark wax and go over top of the big top, which acts kind of like the same thing as the clear wax. It's a barrier in between the dark and the paint. And then I wipe this back and the age that this has is amazing. I hope you enjoyed this video and give me a thumbs up and also share and subscribe to my channel. If you would like any DIY products or any of these thrifted items, you can find me at thepaintedphotographer.com. And until next time, happy painting.